my video on corno competition. We're going to be looking specifically at a corno duopoly and their equilibrium quantity, price, and output, or quantity, price, and profit versus their quantity, price, and profit if they collude together. So in corno competition, it is all about the choice of quantity. Uh, the price is just sort of given by their behavior, but they choose quantity as their approach to compete one with another. Since we only have two firms, we know that the market quantity is equal to the quantity from firm one plus the quantity from firm two, which means that the price that the market will find is going to be equal to 120 minus Q1 minus Q2. Uh, so when either firm changes their quantity, it will affect the price for both firms. Uh, let me give you some cost information about our firms. Let's say total cost for firm one is Q1 squared over two, which means their marginal cost is just Q1. And it means their average total cost, see Q1 squared over Q1 is just Q2. See, and we're gonna make firm two be exactly the same. Q2 squared over two. Marginal cost for firm two is Q2. Average total cost for firm two is Q2 over two. Alrighty. So let's get started. I want to know what these firms are gonna do uh, if they do not cooperate with each other. So let me start by pulling this thing over here and let's divide our situation. Let's divide our different firms decision. For firm one, they face a marginal revenue curve where Q2 is a given, no control over Q2, but when they choose their quantity, uh, it will do the whole doubling the slope thing that we always see in our monopolies or monopolistic competitions. So we got 120 minus two Q1 minus Q2. Now, firm two has something similar. Uh, hey, we don't do calculus in our class. So you have a couple of options here. You can either hope I'm telling you the truth and just go on faith, or if you wanna do some calculus, let's meet up, we can talk about it and I can show you why it comes out like this. But either way, we get the same thing that for firm one who's choosing Q1, double the slope just like we used to double the slope for quantity for our monopolies for firm two is choosing q2 double the slope the q2 and the q1 are not part of their slope at all it's just a shifter for the curve and so those don't get accounted for in the same slope changing way all right so that said let's do firm one's decision now we want to set firm one's marginal revenue equal to firm one's marginal cost. So increase production until you've you captured every good transaction. 120 minus Q, oh, minus two Q1, minus Q2 is equal to Q1. Three Q1 is equal to 120 minus Q2. 40 minus one third Q2 is equal to Q1. This is what we call firm one's best response function, where firm one will know exactly what Q it wants to produce for any choice of quantity that firm two chooses. And so it tells us our best response to whatever they do. Firm two is gonna do a very similar problem. I've made these firms parallel to each other, uh, identical to each other. So let's see, 120 minus Q1 minus 2Q2 equals Q2. Q2 is equal to 40 minus 1 third Q1. And this is firm two's best response function. So both of them have some idea of what they want to do if the other one is doing 
for whatever the other one's doing. When we look for equilibrium, we're looking for a situation where nobody has any incentive to change. And so we're going to be looking for the point where these two best response functions meet each other. When our best response functions coincide, neither firm will have any incentive to change its behavior. They'll both be doing the best thing they can for what the other one's doing. And so this is where our math gets a little messier. It's not too bad at this point, but whatever. So for firm 1, 40 minus 1 third Q2. Well, let's substitute Q2 in. 40 minus 1 third Q1 is equal to Q1. So there it is. We've substituted in for firm 1. Uh, for firm 2, 40 minus 1 third times Q1. Oops. 40 minus 1 over third Q2 equals Q2. So what I've done here is I have substituted each firm's best response function into the others. And by doing that, I have found I will be able to solve for the equilibrium in which both firms are maximizing profits given the other one's behavior. Uh, so let's keep going. Let's see, we got 40 minus 40 over 3 plus 1 over 9q1 equals q1. That's 80 over 3 equals 8 ninths q1, which means our firm 1, their equilibrium quantity is 30. Likewise for firm 2, 40 minus 40 over 3 plus 1 over 9q2 equals q2. It's all the same. q2 is 30. All right, they've both chosen their quantities. Now let's have them choose their prices. Well, that's kind of given for us now. Our market price is equal to 120 minus q star which is 120 minus 30 minus 30, which is 120 minus 60, which is 60. Okay. And let's also get the average total cost. I forgot to do that. Uh, average total cost for firm one is Q over two, 30 over two, is 15. Average total cost for firm 2 is Q2 over 2, which is 15. All right, and now we're ready to get the uh, each firm's profit. Let's see, so profit for firm 1 is equal to the quantity times the price minus the average total cost. Well, that is 30 times 60 minus 15, which is 30 times 45, which is 1,350. Now, firm two is going to do the exact same thing, and you're going to get that profit for firm two is 1,350, which means uh, under Corno, uh, our quantity for the market is 60, our price for the market is 60, our profit for the market is 2,700. For each firm, 21 is 30, quantity 2 is 30, price is still 60, 
and their individual profits are 1350. Okay, so now we want to consider this is what happens if they do not collude. This is if they engage in the best competition that they can. So this stuff really matters. But we're also interested in what if they collude with each other? If we collude, we're going to act like a monopoly. And for simplicity, I'm going to assume that they agree whatever the monopoly output is, they'll both produce half of it. So let's see, if we were a monopolist, we would see our price equal to 120 minus Q, and we double the slope, marginal revenue equals 120 minus 2Q. We'd set that equal to our marginal cost curve, which fortunately is just big Q. So we go 120 minus 2Q equals Q. So Q is going to be 40. That's what the monopolist would pick. Now that means that firm 1 and firm 2 would both produce 20, which is less than the 30s that they produced previously. So if they're going to collude, they're going to produce less stuff, which means that the price is going to be higher. It's going to be 80. So P star is equal to 80. Now each firm with their average total cost, see ATC1, well that's still just Q1 over 2. So 20 over 2 equals 10. ATC2 is also 10. So each firm is going to make a profit. They're going to have the same profit. They're sharing it evenly by assumption. Let's see. Quantity is 20 times price, which is 80 minus average total cost, which is 10. So that's 20 times 70, which is 1400. Now remember, this 1400 is compared to the 1350 before. So each firm is going to make more money and there will be greater industry profits overall. Because both firms make 1400. So industry profits are 2800, wow, are 2800 instead of 1400, instead of 2700. And so there's our incentive to collude. If we can team up and act like a monopoly, we reduce our competition, we'll produce less stuff, sell it for a higher price and make more money. To review the Corno stuff, the main trick was first setting up the marginal revenue function where we doubled the slope based on the variable we're choosing but we did not double the slope based on the variable someone else is choosing. That's just a shifter. Uh, and then the next trick is here in this substitution, where you substitute the best response functions for the two firms into each other. Other than that, we're pretty much just doing all the same stuff we've been doing for a few weeks, and it's fine and dandy. So I hope this video was useful to you. Whether or not it was, I've already spent your time, so too bad. Good luck, everybody. Thanks for watching.